Good evening, everyone. Hope y'all are doing well this evening. Hope y'all are having a good week and about middle way through. My week has been so busy, but um, but it's been good. And so I just wanted to um, hop on. Um, I know it's been a few days since I've been on here. Well, probably about since the fourth. We've had stuff going on, I feel like, every day. Um, but so uh, there is something that I've always enjoyed doing. Well, James and I love to travel. Um, before we had the babies, we traveled so much and now things have slowed down a little bit, but you know, we're getting back into it. And as the kids get older, we'll travel more. Um, but we have traveled to so many places. Um, and um, we, ha so I just wanted to kind of do um, a trip 101, road trip in 101. We road trip everywhere we go. Um, many of you don't know, James is six, 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 seven. Um, and so, you know, big football player and flying just does not go well. And we just like to enjoy each other's company and drive and see stuff along the way and think, oh, we might want to stop along the way. And so I wanted to give just a little road trip 101 because I'm in the process of planning a trip. Um, we are going to go on a trip later this year for our anniversary. And so um, typically when we decide that we wanna go somewhere, I start several months ahead planning. So I would suggest, unless it's just last minute and you don't have time, so really start planning a couple months ahead. Um, and the only reason I wanted to jump on and give some tips is um, people have been like, man, how do you just get such good deals? And I, I'm a saver, now I'm not a cheesecake. But I love finding good deals and it is a challenge for me and it's kind of like a, a putting a puzzle together. So when we start planning for a trip, obviously if it is just a one night overnight thing, absolutely go with a hotel. I mean, you're just gonna, you're not gonna beat it. But if you are staying two plus days Airbnb is the way to go. Um, you know, we all know that hotel rooms have just gone up a lot. Um, and so Airbnb, of course, they have your cleaning fees and stuff. So if you're not staying at least two nights, it's just not worth it. But two or more nights, so worth it. And so what I start doing is when we map out what days we're gonna be gone, um, I start, I get on airbnb.com and I start putting in those dates and looking for, and y'all, so we have stayed in some Sioux, I mean, almost every place we've stayed in, I don't know that we've had any issues with one not being clean. Um, we've stayed in one in Colorado, we've stayed in one in Wyoming, we've stayed um, in Guthrie, Oklahoma, we've stayed Waco, Texas, I mean, we've been all over. And so what I typically do is I plug in the dates and I start looking for, and I'll tell you, I mean, like if we're gone for like three or four nights, I mean, really, I don't look for anything over like seven or $800 for total price. Um, like this time we will probably be staying, if we go to an Airbnb, we'll probably stay three nights. And so, um, we have been looking, so we are actually going to the New England States, and so I've been looking, which is, we know it's a very costly area up there if y'all have been to New York and Maine and Vermont. I mean, it's just a, it, cost of living is, is a lot higher up there, but y'all, I've really found places for three nights, like three to five hundred dollars. I mean, that is really good, like for your own place. I'm talking like king size bed, your own house, and so... I would start um, looking a couple months ahead if you had the chance. Also, another thing that a lot of people do not know about, kind of, if you can be flexible with your dates, moving a date one day forward, one day back, just kind of playing and moving your dates around, you would be amazed. So like there was one place we were looked at staying and literally the week before okay and we're not doing this but it was three hundred dollars a night okay we're not doing that because that is just ridiculous literally the week later 
like the next week and it's like not prom time traveling. It's not, there's not a holiday. It's not on the weekend. It jumped up to $650 a night. And I was like, oh my goodness. So shift your days around. Simple little things like that. Shift your days instead of like, say you're gonna be gone, I don't know, whatever, September. 3rd, 4th, 5th, okay? If that's what you're kind of looking at, staying at an Airbnb, then maybe do the 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. Or shift it to 4th, 5th, and 6th if you're flexible. Um, with us, we pretty much have to nail our days down because when we road trip, um, we try to plan ahead. Now, we do not put a schedule where we are just strapped to a schedule. We like to be flexible, and if new things come up, then we like to go with it. So, 101 road trip, you know, start early, play with your dates on Airbnb. If you do have to do the hotel thing, like when we leave out, um, we don't know where we're gonna land. So I start, we start kind of looking ahead like two hours and I'll get on Travelocity.com and get our hotel. <clears throat> um, and so I always use Travelocity for our hotel. Um, and then I always use um, Airbnb. I, I never really ever use VRBO. Um, I get the best deals on Airbnb. Um, so, hotels, Travelocity, Airbnb for your Airbnbs. And then, um, so that is one good way to save. So two or more days go definitely go airbnb so let me tell you just for example so we went to wyoming so we've had the kids three years now it's been maybe four years ago that we went to wyoming and so we were about oh gosh we we had just started traveling that morning we knew we were gonna hit um jackson hole that night well those of you who, if you've been to that area jackson hole is a pretty expensive place to stay so I started looking for Airbnb because we knew we wanted to be in that area for quite some time. So I started looking, y'all, I found an Airbnb. It was our own little place. It was, it was kind of sort of like a tiny home. Um, there were um, other, like there were multiples of them. So lots of people could stay. You could also get a yurt there. You could stay in a teepee. So it was kind of, um, there's all different ways that you could like sleep. And so ours was like an, like a little tiny home, but I mean, had a full like kitchen, had a living room, TV, fireplace, full bath, a king size bed. I mean, everything. Y'all, we got it for $25 a night. So I think we ended up staying three or four nights there, $25 a night. Now the cleaning fee was a one time, I think it was a, like a one time 50 or $60. That one time 50 or $60 and then $25 a night. And y'all, it was beautiful. And it was over the Teton Pass, which <clears throat> we risk our lives getting there. But no, it, we had, there was a huge storm that just came through and dumped a bunch of snow and we had to go up the Teton Pass, if y'all know anything about that. Um, Let's just say, I, I thought I was going to meet Jesus <laughs> that night. But it just goes to prove if you really research it out, $25 a night for your own place. You're not like sharing a bathroom. We never do a share a room, bathroom. Ne we never do that. Um, always our own place. And so you can really find good condos. Like, so for our trip that we're going to, um, later on so i found a place in the hamptons okay so we all know the hamptons is pretty darn expensive and i looked for like three nights and it's a uh, right on the beach right on the beach and i think it was like a little over four hundred dollars for three nights that isn't i mean like your own house and i'm talking like right on the beach like walk out so the deals are there you just have to be patient so i would suggest I mean, if you're not worrying about money, then <laughs> do whatever. But I like to save, I like to save money and because I like to do other things on our trip. So, um, then something else that we do, we always, so we always, always um, pack an ice chest. We 
ice down cokes. Um, we take a lot of like string cheese. We'll take a loaf of bread. We take some um, peanut butter. I'll mix up some chicken salad. We do a lot of like veggie straws and um, pretzels. And because y'all, I mean, stopping on the way and just the gas station here and there. And we try on our trips, we try to eat out one meal a day, like one really good special meal a day. Typically we will, um, you know, have coffee there at our Airbnb or, um, and then try to maybe take like some little breakfast bars. Now, if there is like a local place where they're like, you have to eat breakfast here. Like when we went to Washington DC, we went to, um, oh my goodness, what is it called? Something farmers. Uniting Farmer, Uniting Farmers. I don't know. Anyway, it's a restaurant literally right down the road from the White House. They said it is to die for, like, their Eggs Benedict and their, um, oh my gosh, what are they called? I can't even remember the little deep fried bread. <laughs> it's covered in powdered sugar. I can't even remember now. Anyway, um was absolutely amazing and they said you've got to do it and so we did that and um just so happened the motor cable for trump drove by and waved at us and my husband was all excited because it was his birthday and so anyway but we did you know there's sometimes we splurge but we try to say we're gonna eat out one meal a day like there's one place that we really want to eat at when we go on our trip it's the first restaurant ever opened in the U.S. and it's the longest running, you know, still running U.S. Uh, restaurant in the U.S. So there are special things like that, but we try to take our own snacks and our own breakfast. That way, you know, you save and that's just so much more money, especially you've got to think about things like you got to set money about back for tolls. Y'all, if you go up north, the tolls will absolutely drain you. If you road trip, I mean, I'm talking like when we drove to New York City, it was like $15 here, $10 here, $20 here, and you're going, oh my gosh, I had no idea. That I didn't even think. So, pack your own bags, I mean, pack your own snacks, and pack your own drinks that way and you, you don't have to worry about going and buying stuff on you know you've already got it and um, also nice to like take your own creamer take your like a gallon of milk and some boxes of cereal and um, especially if you're gonna have that Airbnb for three or four days I'm not talking like take stuff and cook because that's too hard but they're just easy things that save so much money um, all right, something else that I just, and I have no idea how I just found out about this. So it's an app on your phone. It's called Road Trippers. You can plug in your starting, your starting location and your end location. And it will give you, you can plug in restaurants along the way. You can plug in like, um, not real, not like attractions. I'm not talking like amusement parks, but like attractions, like historical things, big, big things that are that area is known for. And so we will be using that this trip because it just lets you know along the way, like, oh hey, we may want to stop. This is where I don't know this battle happened, or this is where this person did this. Um, so Road Trippers is an app. Get it? It looks amazing. Um, I also try to go on Pinterest and I'll say road trip to New England states. And so typically there will be like a couple who, several couples, married couples or whatever, who have traveled and blogged their um, trip. And so like I have found one for the New England state saying, hey, like we know there's a lot to see, but if you're not gonna be here for like a month, then here are like the best places to go. Here's like start here, then go here, then go here. Um, here's some really good restaurants, like some local places or historical places. So always go on Pinterest and <clears throat> um, just look road trip to whatever. Or if you're a person who flies, that's fine. You can still do the same thing. Um, 
We just always like to road trip because it's so fun. Um, also, another little tidbit, get you a big atlas. We got a national park atlas and we love it because we like to go visit a lot of national parks. We went all through Yellowstone and um, we've gone to Rocky Mountain National Park. And so <clears throat> um, it gives you all those really cool places that you can visit and, and like naturey things that you can do. Um, and something that we started in the very front of it, we started logging every state that we've been to, when we went, um, you know, like all the states we've been to together. Like I think that, oh gosh, it's, unreal like how many states we've been to together. I think we've hit quite, quite a lot of them. Um, and so it's just a little neat little keepsake to look back on and see where all you've traveled and when you traveled. And, <clears throat> and we've started um, like putting that in with the kids and you know what states they've gone to with us. Um, so get you an atlas that's got good information. I know that's old school, but it's really nice to have because you get in some areas, especially if like we lost service in Yellowstone and you need it. I mean, you have to have it. Um, so get you a little atlas or ours is a big one um, and um, kind of plot out like where you're going and look and see ahead kind of, and that helps with like knowing whether it's a bigger city or not, whether you know, you need to look to see, do we need to go a little farther to get a hotel or, you know, do, do we need to stop? Um, and so that is something that we do also, the Atlas. Um, oh goodness, there was one other thing that I thought I was going to let y'all know about. Oh, along with the National Park. So we got the National Park Pass. I think we paid $100 for it and I think it was good for... I don't remember how. I think it's still good, and that, that's that been quite a few years back. So you can get a National Park Pass. You kind of pay up front $100, but then you just show that pass, and you've got a little thing that you hang on your rear view mirror, and then you back, you actually like kind of get a card that you can put in your wallet. Um, but it's so nice because then you don't have to pay to get in. Um, so those are just a few little tidbits of our uh, road tripping 101 um you know the biggest thing i can encourage you is don't strap yourself to a schedule like we have done that before we did that when we went to washington dc and there's just no way there's just no way to see all of it but but also um with that being said just don't break the bank to travel because you can travel and see so much especially when you're going to a lot of these historical places you know a lot of it you don't have to, it's free you can just go and see it um google like you know um best places to you know like best historical places to visit while in washington dc or like a you know you can type in like four day road trip to Wyoming or you know, whatever. And, and people have already kind of put a thing together and you're like, oh, this is so nice because I can kind of see what some of the bigger things are to do so I don't miss some of the major things. Um, so those are just little tidbits. And as I am planning our trip, if I find other resources, I will let you know. But, and I probably should have done this a little earlier because people are school I know is gonna get close to starting but we travel when other people don't travel I mean just because we do um, we don't really like traveling in the dead of the summer and it's just too hot hot and we anyway so um so as I get on and I find other resources I'll let you know but if you have any questions don't hesitate like I said I just people have always said Man, you know, like we stayed right next to the Pentagon and I think our hotel was like less than a hundred dollars a night and it was super nice. Like super, like I think it was called the Pentagon Hotel or something. Anyway, and people were like, how do you get such good deals? And I'm like, well, I just search them out and there's all kinds of things that you can bundle. Like, um, if I know if you go up north, I think there's um like if you end up taking public transportation instead of paying like taxi after taxi after, you can get like a one day um one day pass or seven day pass um 
for trolleys. I mean, there's just so many ways to save just some pennies and that just gives you money to do other things. And so anyway, I know I'm rambling on and on, but as I plan our trip, I will let you know. But if you have any questions or, hey, how have y'all done this? Or, hey, you know, when do y'all, like, how do y'all travel? What time do you leave? What's the best time to travel? You know, um, don't hesitate to holler at me, message me. Um, but I just wanted to jump on and give you a few road tripping tidbits and, um, yeah, and if you don't have a road trip, I encourage you to do it. I mean, James and I, we turn a podcast on. We love podcasts, murder mysteries. Um, we just, you know, visiting. Um, and so um, there's a lot that can be learned about each other on road trips. Um, that's good. Um, and then there's um, there's a lot of fun in it, too, because you just have a lot of freedom. So, all right, guys, I will talk to y'all later. If y'all have any questions, let me know. Love y'all. Bye.